Hey everybody, it's the founder of CartFab.com here, and we are finished with the go-kart build. This video goes over the assembly instructions for all the parts, nuts, and bolts that you see here. All of these are found in the kit that you can get with the free plans that I have on CartFab.com. So without further ado, let's check it out. First things first, thread locker. You want to put thread locking compound on every nut and bolt you put on the go-kart to keep it from vibrating loose. So with the prefabricated seat, seat frame, and seat sliders, just take the nuts and bolts, like I said, the dimensions and the specific sizes and lengths of the nuts and bolts are all called for in the plan. So I'm not going to go over each dimension here, but you basically bolt the seat to the frame and then you attach the seat slider to the rest of the go-kart. Next are the tires and rims. You use a four-way tool to put the valve stem back into the rim and then mix a little dish soap water and lubricate everything up when you put it back together. Then you use uh, locking pliers and some screwdrivers to pry everything back into place. There are a few ways to mount tires to rims. I'll show you two. The first option is to remove the poppet or the valve stem and blow it up. Sometimes this doesn't work, but a lot of times you can, you can eventually get it to work. Second option is to take a little starter fluid, I emphasize a little, and light it on fire. This is kind of a dumb thing to do, but I'm just showing you you can do it. If you're concerned about it, take it to a tire shop and have a professional mount it for you. When mounting the drive wheel assembly, you're going to have to follow a few steps. Um, you basically take your nuts and bolts and you torque them all down to the same foot pound or the same torque. I'm using a torque wrench to do this. Again, notice I'm using thread locking compound. Bearing installation is pretty straightforward. You just make, want to make sure you don't break your bearings because they're hardened. So you use a piece of pipe or, in my case, a socket, and you tap it in, and that's what the drive wheel assembly looks like when you're done. With the brake band assembly, you want to make sure it happens before you put on the drive wheel. So take your cotter pins, your clevis pin, put it all together, slide your drive wheel assembly on, and your machine washer, and hand tighten your nut. Next is clutch and chain. Use your 3 16 inch key and put it in the clutch and lightly tap the clutch onto the engine shaft. And that's it for the clutch for now. Next is the chain. You take your master clip with the posts and the plate and the spring clip and use a little screwdriver to pry it all together. Make sure the closed end is facing forward and the trailing end is the open end of the master link clip. Then you take a bolt, it's usually a 5 16 inch fine thread bolt, and you tap it on there to impact it on and hold your clutch in place. Next is kill switch. You want to disassemble your kill switch and insert it into the hole that was drilled into the steering hoop bracket. Notice that blue stuff on there? It's thread locker, it's really important. You also want to attach the ground there. That's what that bolt is right there. I'm using zip ties to attach the cable and running it to the engine. This yellow wire, disconnect it. It's the low oil cutoff switch. If you go around a turn, it'll turn it off. You take the kill switch wire and you plug it into the yellow wire that goes to that box right there. And I'm using a bullet connector with heat shrink on it to secure it so it can be disconnected at a later time if I need to. So you can turn the engine on and off from the engine as well as the steering hoop. Next is engine mounting. Look at these nuts here. They're called serrated flange nuts. They'll bite into the metal and keep your engine from sliding forward and backward. Basically, you put all the bolts in, tighten them, slide it forward a little bit to put your chain under tension, and then you're done. With the steering wheel, you take three small nuts and three small bolts, and you attach it to the steering column. Notice the pitman arm and the top of the steering wheel both line up. Brake and gas pedals are next. Um, it takes a 5 16th inch bolt and there's a thread inside of the brake and gas pedal and you don't want to tighten it all the way, you want to have a little bit of play in it and then you tighten the nut down. With the return springs you can tighten them as much as you want to and then you attach the brake rod. Notice I'm hand tightening it right there to not uh, have the brake rod bind. Uh, this side is the throttle side and I'm doing the same thing there, tighten it down all the way, and then you attach your throttle cable. With your throttle cable, you want to make sure that it has that spacer in it, 
and it is able to freely move so you can tighten that last nut down pretty tight and not have to worry about it binding there. With the engine throttle uh, linkage you zip tie everything, loosen your friction nut if you have a new engine and insert the cable through the wire stop, secure the cable housing and then secure the cable to the wire stop and zip tie it all up together and you're done. Next are the spindles, kingpin bolts and spacers for your wheels. You attach your spindles to the, to the spindle brackets with your kingpin bolts and you want to make sure you don't over tighten it. You want to make sure the spindles can still freely rotate without binding so you can steer in ease. Uh, the front tires, same thing with the bearings there. After you get everything on there, machine washer, then the nut, you hand tighten it, spin the wheel, make sure it doesn't bind up, otherwise you'll ruin your bearings. Last step is tie rods. It's a pretty straightforward process here. Adjust your tie rod ends with the steering wheel pointed straight up. Measure both sides of the rims, make sure everything's equal, then tighten down your nuts, and you're done with everything on your build. Woohoo! Ready to go on a go-kart ride? Hey everybody, thanks for watching this build series, how to make your own go-kart from scratch. And please give this video, how to assemble a go-kart, a thumbs up. It really helps me out, I appreciate it. Also, please let me know in the comments below, what should I build next? So without further ado, let's do a burnout. Where's Daddy? Say hi, Daddy. 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 Daddy.